Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Turtle with Enter the Shell, and uh, recently I was invited to go see some uh, graffiti being showcased uh, down in L.A. I got to speak with Pyro, who was uh, the curator of this collection, and uh, this is what uh, I found out. Enjoy. So you put this uh, entire uh, collection together? Uh, yeah, it's a collection of a crew of West Coast artists. Um, it was my idea to do this and in conjunctions with Mirror, Ga Mirror Gallery and Bobby Carlton we made it happen yeah. And tell me about putting uh, this collection together was that a, a, a daunting task or was that very uh, simple? <laughs> it, no it was an extremely daunting task considering our crew has about 60 members in it worldwide. Um, I've, I had to deal with customs, I had to deal with multiple countries, I had to deal with artists who actually haven't painted in 25 years, um, a lot of stuff. It was, it was, it was, I only had six weeks to do it too, so I, it was a lot of work. <laughs> about the, the artists that haven't painted in 25 years, was it, was it uh, you coming to them saying, hey, I would I really like you to revisit? Well, yeah. Basically, I mean, these guys are all my friends. I mean, I've been in this crew since it was first started. Um, so all these guys, they're all my lifelong friends. So to me, going to them, I still talk to them on a regular basis. They just throw off living life. They got families, you know, kids, et cetera, et cetera. They're not part of the art world anymore. So, yeah, I, I mean, I came to a lot of those guys. I knew when I first started this I knew who was going to be hard and who wasn't so those are the first guys I went to right off the bat was like hey I'm doing this project and I explained it all to them and I really want you to be a part of it and a couple of them I really had to stay on I really had to like every couple of days hey how are you doing it are you doing it? are you doing it and a couple of them were like even really a lot really late you know last minute but they came through so yeah it was it was definitely diff it was definitely difficult because I'm dealing with 60 different people all over the world, and some of them need a little more babysitting than others. It was I couldn't just say, "Hey, here's a deadline," and you know have it be done. I had to kind of walk them through it. Opening night was insane. We had probably had about 800 people here. Um, we sold a f sold a few pieces, which was really good, but. Um, the opening night, I'm kind of sad because a couple of pieces, this is all part of the problems that we I've run into, uh, were stuck in customs. Like the Bates piece that we have here sitting on the table right now was stuck in customs and wasn't at the opening. And, and we had actually had a couple of people who were interested in seeing it at that point in time that didn't get a chance to. Um, so that was kind of a low point, but at the same note, it was also a high point because it was opening night and the entire graffiti community as well as the art community came out to support what we're doing here and, and it was, it was, a, it was good. You know, there's been a lot of ups and downs with the whole project, but overall it's been something incredibly great, yeah. Tell me about the art community coming in. Does that only entice what you guys are doing to keep on going? That's kind of a, it, it's, it's a two-pronged thing. I mean, it, everyone's got their own individual views with that. Um, as a graffiti crew, as our family, as our group of friends, it's not going to change anything. We're still going to do what we're going to do. A lot of the whole pro uh, the whole reason why I did this project was for a couple things. One was for to kind of reconnect everyone in our crew, and two to bring our name to the art world for those of us in the crew that want to pursue art careers. Because there's a lot of guys in the crew that do do not want to even pursue art careers, um, but there are guys that want to pursue the art careers that don't have the resources to get into the art world or having problems getting their foot in the door. And this is to kind of help those guys out. So it kind of opens the door for a lot of the guys that now they want to pursue that and now they can because now they've made connections, they've talked to people, they've gotten their name out there, they've been in a major show, they've gotten the publicity and they're taking that kind of momentum and running with it. And that was kind of part of the, part of the whole objective was to open up doors for people. Um, as a crew as a whole, that's not where our goal is headed. It's not to be a part of the art community. It's not to, you know, be this big established name. You know, that's for the individuals to decide. What was your favorite piece? Wow, that's really hard. I have, there's like a lot of pieces in here that I really, 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 really like. I really like Zane's piece. 
We had the old western theme with the rivets. I, I, I'm in love with that piece. I love Hasler's piece because it just looks like you went up to a wall and took an X-Acto knife and cut a piece out and put it on a piece of board. I think that's awesome. I love Abel's piece. Um, I'm a big fan of his work. I always have been and I love black and gray. So yeah, there's a lot of different pieces. It's hard for me to say I have a favorite. Um, I love Mir's piece. His is the tribute to the Beastie Boys and you know, because that's something I grew up with. I grew up, I mean, that song, I've loved that song from the day it came out, and, and he captured that whole essence of that song on canvas, like, perfectly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, I can't say I have a favorite. There's a lot of, there's a lot of favorites in here. Yeah, the Beastie Boys was definitely a surprise piece for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Tell me about uh, actually displaying your art. You know, art is a very personal thing. You know, towards people, do you still get, you know, nervous when most definitely most definitely art is something that it's like it comes from the soul and it's not something that I just throw out there so anytime whether it's a piece on a street whether it's a doodle in a black book whether it's a canvas on a wall I'm extremely judgmental and I overly so you know I, I'm obviously overly critical as most artists are of their own work um, so and that's always the hardest hardest part for me is like oh my god you know what are people gonna think you know I've over the years I've gotten more used to it I'm not gonna say I'm over it because I don't think an artist ever actually gets over it but um, I've gotten a little more used to it but it's still it's still kind of nerve-wracking especially because I don't do gallery shows I'm not a gallery artist never have been and it's not where I'm trying to go I do tattoos and I paint graffiti I do things on the street so to even be in a gallery is like one on one hand it's a, it's an ultimate honor because I'm like wow someone would actually like my art that much to have it on a canvas to put it in a house to put it in a gallery but on the other hand it's like wow they like my art that much like I got to do something good you know so it's kind of like wow it's a trip it's definitely a trip is, is there a, a theme in this collection this collection right here the only theme is basically WCA um, it was it's the first ever group show of WCA. Um, we've been a crew for 30 years. We're one of the first crews in LA. Didn't, weren't, weren't, we didn't start graffiti in LA, but we were definitely there when it started. Um, we're there, we, we've attributed a lot of firsts in graffiti history under our belt. And we've never shown in this type of setting. We've always been about the streets. The world has turned in the past 30 years and, and, and graffiti has gone more mainstream and has gotten more popular and more accepted. So as a result, I think it was time that we did kind of a recollection of the crew's history through photographs as well as what the people are up to currently through the artwork. So that would be the basic theme. Do you guys have a website? We don't have a website. We've been pretty much underground, not really being part of like the machine, you know, and I use that really loosely, but being part of the art world, being part of like um, the internet and all that really hasn't been our thing. It's always been about a group of friends hanging out and painting and doing what they love together. It wasn't about selling t-shirts, it wasn't about selling prints, it wasn't about being known worldwide, it wasn't about any of that, and it still really isn't. Like I was saying before, the whole reason for this art show was to open that world up to certain people that want to pursue that. As a whole, the crew, we, that's not what our goal is. That's not what we're pursuing. So we don't have a website. We're not trying to be like that. It's, it's more of a family, and we try to keep it that. Where do you see graffiti art heading to? Is there a path? Or is it you know, it's really hard to say. Graffiti art has definitely gotten so extremely popular. I, I've, I've been saying this for years, for at least a decade, that I've always thought graffiti art is going to influence mainstream in the ways of graphic design, which it has, in the way of advertising, which it has, in the way of public art, which it has. Uh, as far as where it's going to go now, it really could go anywhere because graffiti was born out of letter form but has evolved into much more than that. There are people that specialize in letters and typography and a lot of them have moved into that. A lot of them now tattoo and they specialize in doing custom lettering and make a good living at that. There's a lot of people that 
were specialized in characters and they've went on to animation. There's a lot of people that specialize just in overall themes and they've gone on into design work. You know, so graffiti will stay the same on the streets. I don't think it'll ever change. It will still be pieces and words and letters and names and crews. But graffiti influence, I think, I mean, it's already influenced and spread worldwide. But I think it's going to continue on because now all the people that have been doing it for 20, 30 years are in positions to put it in commercials, to put it in movies, to use it in ad spaces for major corporations because now they're at that age where they're the working class, you know. And it can just continue on going further and further. It's kind of the same thing like these obscure punk rock bands from the 80s you now hear in the backgrounds of commercials for Toyota. Same type of thing, you know. I, it, it's going to be subliminally all over the place. It just won't be a graffiti piece per se. But it, you, I think you will still be able to see the influence. So I think that's where it's going.